Strip AVN Day 2. We're here with Eric John. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm good. Now, you're one of the few male guys we've talked to. Well, you know, we've always had it. We've had a booth at this thing since 2004. This I know. Was the first event that I ever went to in the industry. And it's also, I got married here at 2010, remember? Remember? Yes, how sir, I remember. We took pictures of it. Yeah. So we just had our third year anniversary. Nice. Congratulations. It was January 7th. So the, the event used to be on top of it all the time, and we'd always celebrate here, and then they moved it a week. So Right. right. Yeah. Now, now explain to people, how long have you been in the industry? Since that, that January of 2004. Now, um, what do you primarily do on the industry? You have your own site? You work for somebody well, else? I mean, our company, Erotic Entertainment, my wife and I, my wife Vicky Chase and I have a company called Erotic Entertainment. I'm the CEO. She's the president. So uh, the, main, the main income sources at the moment are obviously her. She performs for other companies. I perform for other companies. For our own company, the main thing we're, we do is we're Streamate's number one boy-girl feature show. I've noticed that. Every, <laughs> every day. I noticed that. I so, see your tweets come out and say, hey, we're coming on. You know, and, uh, so we started that in 2010, mm -hmm. October 2010. We've done over 2,500 feature broadcasts. No way. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Like that's a lot of coming. We do every day at least once and sometimes twice. We do 10 shows a week, 9 or 10 shows a week. No way. Yeah. Even Holy. holidays, uh, like... Christmas, New Year's, all time. Wow. So Dr. Phil wouldn't have anything, you know, at least have sex twice a week, you know. Well, I, I mean, me personally, I, I do, depending how you count it. The show is two hours, and I, there's, there are two self-contained segments. So I do a complete show twice, which in a scene, I mean, it would count. If you were booked for somebody else, it would count as two scenes because it's you right. came. Right. And then I usually do other scenes during the day, too. So I okay. average somewhere between, I, like, I, I two and you. four <laughs> scenes a day. I, I don't have that kind of stamina. Sorry, <laughs> it's a learned trait. How do you how do you learn that? I I mean, the multi-orgasmic thing was just natural. I've always had that. Um, I think though the overall performance thing. I always tell people it's it's really not that different from sports because I'm an athlete. I played soccer. I was like recruited in college. I played in college. I still play now. And it, the bottom line is if you. If you do something for somewhere between two and six hours a day every day, you're going to get you, good. And you do the things when you're not doing that that you need to, ch to take care of your body to do it. Fluids, rest, don't party, get sleep, eat healthy. You're going to become good at the thing, I hope. If you're doing it that, I mean, so there's nothing, Matt, it's... You just got. You just become good at it. Now, now I can take a week off when I'm here, not to party and, and rest and all that, right? <laughs> no. Because I'm going to party and, and, and not we're rest. Bro we're <laughs> broadcasting every day here. Really? No so shit. We, we've been doing foursomes with those three lovely ladies and me in the morning. Not like You're a lucky guy. The other, <laughs> the three of them, not Lilith. And so, before we came to the booth, we had sex with everyone in the booth. Okay, I'm envious now. <laughs> See, I feel like we're a lot more authentic because these other people are just at the adult convention. But yeah, I just banged one out. You want like covered in sex, and then we come down to the convention as an afterthought. I just had a horrible thought. You washed your hand, right? <laughs> well, I mean, okay, it's, okay, it's okay. a combination of Summer Ray, Kimber Peters, and okay, Trump I'll and shake it again. Juice. All right. I'm it's shaking that again. Like, uh, it's more on my face and my dick. <laughs> I'm not going there, sorry. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't shoot that way, sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, the, the hands, I didn't, I didn't even have to do anything with my hands. There were so many of them, I was just like. <laughs> All right, well. But uh, let me just say this, what was unfair about this. I came one time at the end, and these, they were coming like three and four times each. Okay, see, that's just not fair. That's not fair. See how unfair that is, people at home? Well, <laughs> being a girl is just not fair because you usually decide who gets to have sex and who doesn't. Uh, I don't even want to touch that. You know, <laughs> see, just leave that alone. That's like on the live show, the guys are always, there's three girls there, they all can see the screen. And the dumbasses are like, who's the one who gives the best blowjob? And I'm like, why would I answer oh, that question? No. They're all wonderful. Like, I mean, that's like, does this dress make me look fat? Yeah, it's the guy, yeah. You just don't answer that question. Right, right, right. All right, just say the wifey, because that's true, too, because... Yeah, there you go. ...jobs are ridiculous, so it's easier. So what's the funnest part of your job, other than just having sex all the time? 
The funnest part is when Lilith knocks the sign down. Yeah, that's awesome. Or is it Kimber's fault? See, look at that innocent look. All three, they're, uh, anyway. <laughs> nice. So anyway, uh, I mean, I, it's obviously the funnest part. The reason I, I just hesitate to give the no-brainer answer is because people just don't realize how much, like, okay, just think about it. We do the show every day. Just every day we manage to make it work and you manage to come on time and you manage to not, it does, you could be tired, you could have had a bad day yesterday. Some girls are wonderful, some girls may or may not be wonderful. Like, just if you really think about that, every day doing it, then you realize that all jobs are hard and everybody in the industry that I know works really hard. Like, we're on set, I mean, we're, the other day, before I came over here, I had to do all this packing and I did a show in the morning, I was on set to 11, I slept for like five hours, got up, did another show, and set again, and I'll tell you what, the, the industry is not what it was. It's harder to make money now. You're scrambling all the time. Right. You gotta you gotta do more work to get them more money. Competition. Piracy is terrible. People. The free stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. It ruined Hollywood. It ruined the record industry. And it's ruining us. And if you do that, then the quality of what you're paying for is gonna go down too because no one's gonna be able to produce it because you can't make money anymore. Exactly. So exactly. the live thing has actually been very good to us because it's very hard to because in the live thing. Your name could be Bob, and Bob says, Eric, I'd really like to see this. And I can be like, Bob, we'd love to show you that right now. And you can't steal that. Exactly. Because you can't watch a DVD and ask me that, and I can't answer. So we have people that, like, they tune in every day, and they know, they like, will talk to me about Vicky, and they'll talk to me about whatever. And we really appreciate those people. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you know, just think even just five, ten years ago, you there was no streaming. There was no none of this. I know that. I know that. It's all it's a new. big thing. You know? It's a big thing, and and you know, the infrastructure of the industry has difficulty reacting to it because it's different for agents, and it's different. Your time on set's different. No one knows what to pay people, and it's a different audience. Like some of the people on the live thing are really into like DVDs, and they know I'm in Seinfeld, and right. others are just people that are on the online thing, and they just want to do that, but they don't really know porn stars or. Or they don't care sometimes. My broadcast partner, Streamate, actually, they, they helped bridge that gap by really creating that porn star category on there and really like I was frustrated when I first started doing the live thing that some of the other companies they were treating us just like we're an amateur couple and right, right, right. and I felt like that were, we weren't really at that point we already had a fan base we were bringing right, that fan right. base to them stream may acknowledge that a little bit more quicker and they kind of built that whole category around it well that's awesome man. What do you what, now? Do you get treated? I mean, is it different being a, a, a webcam uh, performer in this industry? Do you get to, you know, like if I was only doing webcam and I come here and, and I, I talk to the other stars I, and like, I don't think, oh, I shoot for this. And I right. For I don't think we view. I got to be careful about that. I know. If I, do you get looked at different though? Is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I think definitely. I don't like the porn star categories for the people in movies. Right. 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 And I say movies meaning content produced by a company. It doesn't mean movies like you can hold it. It might be websites. It might be... Websites. Right, right. I've done a but clipper brazer. I, I that there's a line between I sit in my house and I just do solo cams and I work for Digital Playground and Hustler and whatever. Do solo shots. Yeah. No, no, it's a movie. It's different. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's like, it's like having a recording contract or else like playing an instrument in your garage. I'm not knocking the person playing the instrument in their garage, but I don't think, I think that you have to reach a certain level of proficiency at the performing or have some certain quality. Like, not everyone who is doing amateur webcam could do Wasteland. Like, right, right, right. It's not the same thing. Let some movies have a lot of acting in them and some movies have a lot of sex in them and some sex scenes like kink do things that like you wouldn't do at home. Ever. Right, right, right. So um, there might be brilliant webcam people that really do well for their fans and do amazing things. It's a different thing that they're good at. That is not the same thing as exactly. I, I cross over because, but, but I'm really 
I'm really doing a scene as a stream. Like my my webcam is more like the way I would do a scene, except I'm talking to you. Yeah, right. It's not like right. I'm doing something that different. It it is the stuff I like to shoot. I like to shoot boy girl. I let, I don't really do anything extreme. I just like beautiful high end sex. The production right. is a certain way. The set a certain way. But it's it's not. It's just different. Now let me ask you this. You think. There'll be a day when we see like a girl that starts off in Kansas as a webcam girl. She's well, that's make, already making here. ends meet. That's Do you think here. that's going to jump over to this that's the other side? Here. Really? But you, but, but I, so I mean, I get new girls and really well-known girls on the show. I get, right, right. I get girls who've done their first scene ever on the show, and like on January 27th this year, we have Courtney Combs. So oh, we nice. have like the spectrum, and. And sure, like strippers used to, some of them would be, but not all of them. Right. Some strippers became porn stars. Some webcam people became porn stars. I think what is true is all porn stars need to incorporate the live thing somehow into their portfolio. I think they are during the, you know, like if I was a porn star and I'm not shooting at the moment, I might as well be in there making some income. If you're you know? a porn star, you have to consider your name Eric John, Lexi Love, that's your brand. Exactly. And you, you need to do all the things associated with that brand. You need to do good performances when you perform. You need to have sponsorships. You need to have websites. You need to have the live thing. So what I think is true is the live thing needs to be a piece on nearly every successful performer's portfolio one way or another. But what I don't think, not all cam girls could, could or would want to. Exactly. A lot of amateur cam girls like wouldn't want anyone to know about it. Don't even want their whole picture up. If, right. To me, and this is a this is a broader speech to people <laughs> considering it. If you want to be a porn star, I don't think you should do it if you're trying to do the half-assed version where you don't want anyone to find out and you're not really pushing the publicity because you're trying to do it without your mom finding out or whatever. You're, if you're do if you're this, you are trying to get the interview. You are trying to get the award. You're not trying to hide. You're so in it if, to win it. If you are if you think that you're going to be, don't be a porn star. Be a prostitute or be a <laughs> yeah. be a, a swinger girl or be a camp. But if you want to be a, quote, porn star, this is that. You meet the fans. You do the appearances. You have other things with your content. And, and you manage your social media. If you're going to do it, do it. Yeah, if you're going to make that sacrifice, make the sacrifice and be successful about it. Well, I appreciate the time you've taken with us. Oh, we, yeah. we like. So Sorry people, sign yeah, no problem. So if people want to find you, where can they find you? Well, every day they can watch our live thing, which is at 10 a.m. every day uh, on Streamy. And that's Pacific it's called, time? It's called, it's Pacific time. I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And I, know why I don't mean to be that way either because the reason we pick 10 a.m. is we have a huge following in Europe. Because 10 a.m. is European late yeah. night. Yep. And we even get like this weird early morning Australian crowd. And in the U.S. during the week, we get these people at work. Oh, you know, nice. Work. So this one woman in particular is like always masturbating in her office. And then like <laughs> <laughs> we're like talking to her on the live thing. And all of a sudden she'll go silent. And we'll be like, hey, hey. And it, it turns out what's going on there is that somebody walked in and she just turned her computer or something. She watches like fucking every day. Nice. You need fans like that. I, I guess. I, all right. I, I mean, we need all kinds of fans. Yeah. I, I just got it. When I worked at Boeing, I never could have done that. I'll tell you that. No, no, no. no. I'm sure somebody tries. <laughs> all right. I'm sure somebody tries. But. So, Streammate and uh, you on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff? Oh, yeah. Eric underscore John, E R I C underscore J O H N. If you just want the tweets about the show, you can just follow Arati TV, E R O T I Q U E TV. But if you want that, plus I go like, hey, I just did a great interview with these people and whatever, then follow my other one. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking time with us. Yeah, but you also got to hear about Lakers and Clippers and Galaxy and. <laughs> Well, I just let that go over my head because I, I have no idea what that is. We could, yeah, we can talk about Barcelona's season, all kinds of stuff. Like that. All right. So, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.